working with D-Lab full time. I'm between repairs right now. So when I have a little low in production, I switch over and build some boutique amps. A fellow in Canada sent me this little Sylvania UHF converter. It was for televisions back in the 50s when they didn't have the UHF tuner. They only had VHF. So this would actually convert it and give you those extra channels. But the cabinets are Bakelite and they're gorgeous and they're just the right size to build a small practice amp in. I built one of these a few weeks ago and I featured it. It was a 2 watt build using a 6V6 output tube. So we are going to reproduce that build, right? So now you guys can see all the parts that are required to do it. You start off with a Hammond chassis. It's an aluminum chassis. 7 by 5 by 2 inch. Well of course you're going to need a power transformer. Now this was a donor from an FM tuner. So it's got your 117 volt input. The high voltage is approximately 150 volts and then it has the 6.3 volts for the filaments. And it's in a small package so this will go on that chassis pretty easy. The output transformer, these are readily available. This is a PT31 transformer, 5K primary, 8 ohm secondary. You can get these through amplifiedparts.com. I think they're approximately $15, okay? And I've got a set of pots. If you remember from the original video, I used pots from a Newcomb record player, and I happen to have another set. So the volume is a 1 meg, and the tone is a 500K, and it has the built-in power switch, okay? Then, circuitry-wise, we're going to base the whole amp around the D-Lab ECB Class A board. So this is the driver board that will support the 12AX7 and also supply the signal to the 6V6. And then we have the little Cub 1 power supply board and this guy has a full wave rectifier on it for this application. And your filter caps and of course your screen and your preamp resistor. I sell these boards bare or populated. You just need to contact me, tell me what you want to build and I can custom configure these for you, okay? Uh, tube sockets for the build are also vintage. This is an octal Bakelite type socket for the 6V6. And then I have a cinch 9-pin socket for the 12AX7. And of course, we're going to use Switchcraft jacks. All top quality stuff. Some of it fairly vintage, okay? So the first thing I need to do is gut this guy out. We're going to try to reuse the glass and possibly the knobs. So let's see what we got going. She looks pretty crusty and dusty. All right, let's get it out of there. So there's three screws that hold the chassis in. I popped the knobs off, and unfortunately, these are D shaft knobs. And if you recall, the pots I'm going to use have spline shafts, so we won't be able to use these knobs, but I do have a pair of the old Newcomb record player knobs that I used on the other build. And we'll put those on this one, okay? So I've got the screws out. Let's pull this guy out. All right. Lovely, huh? Nice and dusty. This thing's obviously been stored for a long time. You may think, well, why don't you just reuse this chassis? It'd be a lot more work than what it's worth also. If you look at the shafts here, they are pretty long to get through the cabinet, okay? So what I prefer to do is take my chassis, put all kinds of stuff in it here, okay? I want to start out with a fresh chassis, and it's going to go all the way up to the front of the cabinet. And if you look, you see this V shape here, okay? And that's the casting of the bake light. So to get my chassis to seat all the way to the face, I'm going to actually mill that V shape in the front of the chassis. Then she'll seat flush and the control shafts and all that will make it far enough out to where we can get those knobs on. Otherwise you'd have to find some pots that have extended shafts and those are kind of uh, impossible to find these days. So. First thing I'm going to do is mark this 
throw it on the milling machine real quick and also have to cut the opening for the power transformer. So an easy way to get this pattern is to remove the bottom plate from the transformer. Take these screws out and this little tin plate has the opening sizes that you need to mill on the chassis. So I'll get this all milled, I'll show you guys the end result and then we'll do a test fit on the chassis. So there's the cutout for the power transformer using this frame as a template. So this rectangle will come out, we got our four holes to mount the transformer. See our arrow pointing forward here is where the V cutout is so that the chassis will seat into the cabinet properly. So what I'm going to do is get all that cut. We're going to put in the chassis. Then on the front of this cabinet we need to drill a hole right here for the input jack. But I'm not going to drill that until the chassis is ready so then when we pile it through the cabinet it's going to line up perfectly on the chassis and then we'll open the hole so you can plug your guitar in here. This will be volume and this will be tone with a power switch. Alright, there's the chassis fixed in the mill ready for the opening. I made a big pilot hole that the milling bit goes down into. Then I'll just touch off in this corner and cut out the rectangle. Now on this front V shape, I'm going to take the mill and just come across the top here and make a slot. And you see I already made a little pilot hole down here. I'll simply take one of my X-Acto blades and I'm going to scar that and I'll be able to peel that material right out so I'm not going to have to flip this up and mill that surface. Keep in mind that yeah, I have a milling machine it's nice, it makes it easy, but you can do the same work with a little nibbling tool or a Dremel tool and get the same results. Alright, the milling is complete. Now I need to take my utility knife, score this aluminum, peel that out, and we'll test fit it in the cabinet. Alright, there is the aluminum. I simply scribe it with a utility knife, okay? Then grab a pair of wire cutters, nice strong ones. Cut that aluminum. And then you take a pair of pliers, get under that lip. It's just like a sardine can, guys. You just roll the aluminum and you'll have your cutout. Alright, so I got her rolled, and then she snaps right off. There is our cutout. Obviously, I'm going to take a file, clean that up, but let's see how it fits. There it is, flush against the front. And now my controls will have plenty of shaft length for the knobs. All right, now that the chassis is seated and it can't move, now we can pick the location for the input jack. You don't want to go too far down, but you also don't want to come up here and hit this little V, okay? So you want to be somewhere right in between. I would not recommend center punching this material because it's very brittle. So I'm going to use a center drill. And it just hit the chassis. So now I've got perfect alignment for the input jack and the cabinet. So I can drill these now and when we're done everything will go right into place. Alright, there's the test fit. You can see our input jack lines up really nice. So after it has a lock washer it's going to recede a little more so I may have to open this hole a little bit. But she's looking really good. Next question. The transformer line up. Sure did. So now I need to make the cutouts for the 6V6-12AX7 and the output transformer. Then we can get the boards in and wire it up. Alright, got all the parts mounted to the chassis. We're ready to wire. Over here is our tone, power on, volume, input, our Rudolph lamp, power transformer, output transformer. 
spin it around. This is our 6V6, 12AX7. This wiring will exit through this little grommet to the bottom of the board. So feed the 6V6 and the speaker output jack. There's the ECBA board ready to be wired up. So then I simply swing wires down to the tube sockets. There's very little wiring involved in these amps because that board does a job for you. Over here, you can see our power transformer, and there is our power supply board. Fuse holder, AC is going to come in here. This is the speaker output jack. So we are ready to wire. Wiring of the little 2 watt 6V6 amp project is complete. Top side looks nice and clean. On the back, I added a bracket to hold this down into the cabinet. I'll show you that later. Here is the wiring underneath. You see the D-Lab ECBA board pretty much handles all the component wiring. You don't have to land a single terminal board to build this amp. So once this D-Lab board is installed, you just add jumpers to your tube sockets for the signals and power. And of course you have your power supply board here. So the red is the high voltage, yellow is screens, purple is preamp power. Then of course you have to hook up your controls and your input jack. This amp is ready to test. Okay, here we go. Test out the little 2 watt amp. Since this design has been proven out, I didn't have to adjust bias. Everything dialed right in. So this is our power on and tone. This is our volume. Okay. I have a guitar hooked up. Please excuse my playing. I am not a guitar player. So now if you crank her up, she distorts really nice. It's a cool little amp, and you can pretty much put that circuitry in any cabinet. It does not have to go in the Sylvania cabinet, but of course, the Bakelite makes it look really cool. All right, I'm going to go ahead and pop this in so you can see what the final product should look like. Well, here's a little 2-watt amp installed in its new home, the Sylvania Bakelite cabinet. So we flip her on, you can see a little bit of that red LED once you get some glass in here with your artwork. It'll illuminate that, look pretty cool. It's your input jack for the guitar, volume here, and tone. Pretty neat little package. All right, everybody, I've just provided you some pretty clear and detailed information on how to lay out and construct your own little Class A boutique amplifier. And as I stated, it doesn't have to be in this cabinet. You can put in anything you wish. Be creative. But what I'm trying to show you here is using my little board system really simplifies the process. Reduces wiring and definitely reduces noise. You're pretty much guaranteed if you follow what I've showed you that you will have a successful amp project when you're complete. So a lot of you have been asking, Terry, we've seen this board in many of your videos, but yet it's not on your website for sale. Yes, I know, and I'm sorry. I just have not had time in the past to do that. But now I have some free time on my hands because I'm running D-Lab 100% of the time. So I will be updating the website immediately. You'll see these board systems. I'll have prices for bare boards, populated boards, and instructions for how to build your own little amp. So just bear with me. I'll have it on really soon, I promise. Check out dlabelectronics.com. It's coming your way.